Hey, 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 all right, everybody. How's it going? Now, I was on the internet and I seen an article from the RAC and it pointed me in the direction of the little book of EV myths. Um, and that's from Fair Charge. Now, it's free to download. Uh, you might have seen it already, but it's free to download. I think it came out yesterday. It's dated the 27th of March anyway. Um, but it's free to download and it's trying to sort of dispel the myths that people who dislike EVs keep spreading around all the time. Um, uh, so we'll have a little look. I'll, I'll have a little look at the, the, the headlines of the paragraphs. I won't go into detail because the video would be about an hour long. So, um, but you can doubt, I'll try and put the link in the description. So it's a little bit book of myths, uh, trying not to, you know, get rid of the myths surrounding electric vehicles. So let's look at the first uh, paragraph. EVs are more expensive than combustion cars. Now, um, if you did like for like a while back, uh, courses and Corsa E and the Corsa, there's a lot of difference in the recommended price, but prices are coming down right now. They are 2024 is the year when prices are coming down. Um, there's a lot of cheaper EVs coming out as well. Battery prices are falling. I did mention yesterday about the Tesla Model 2, which is going to be cheaper. Uh, CATL are going to be in sort of with Tesla to make this cheaper cars. The battery is going to come from CATL. But I was thinking that those CATL batteries are also going to go into other cars to make them cheaper. And they're saying they're going to be 50% cheaper. They can try and reduce battery prices by 50%, which is massive. Um, so anyway, next one. EV batteries don't last long. Now, about 10 minutes ago, somebody emailed me, not didn't email me, uh, sent a comment on my channel. And in the comment, it said, why would you want an EV? The batteries only last 10 to 12 years. Now, I got to give it to him. I got to give it to this person. He didn't say three years or five years. So the goalposts have slightly moved now from three to five years. But they've moved in the right direction, the goalposts this time, to 10 to 12 years. It always used to be three to five years, but now people are starting to say 10 to 12 years. Um, I'll never buy an EV because the batteries only last three years. Oh, I'll never buy an EV because it only lasts five years. I'll never buy because it lasts 10 years. I'll never buy because it tw lasts 20. They keep moving it. I'll, I'll, I'm never going to buy it. Whatever number the battery lasts for, they won't buy them because of that number. Um, now, we know that there's still EVs on the road, 10 to 12 years old, that are still going. Um, so, and modern EV batteries, say a car you bought today, the batteries are much better than the original Nissan Leaf, for example. We know the Nissan, we know the original, the very, very first Nissan Leafs, uh, they didn't have, they weren't the best. They didn't have any proper thermal management. Um, so those batteries there won't last as long as the more modern batteries. And batteries are just getting better and better, so they last longer. So anyway, myth dispelled, dispelled, sorry. <laughs> um, EVs regularly catch fire. Now we know that certain people, there's a certain channel that makes it sound like only electric cars catch fire, no petrol cars catch fire, no diesel cars catch fire, only EVs. And the mainstream media are guilty of that as well. But we know, in reality, with the data, that um, EVs catch fire less. Uh, EVs pollute more than ICE vehicles. Now, there's been loads of studies, loads and loads of studies, and we know that EVs are cleaner. Uh, from, from wheel, from well to wheel to grave, electric cars are cleaner than petrol and diesel. And also, there's the fact that um, if you bought an EV today, in 10 years time, the grid will be even cleaner than it is today. So your EV will be even cleaner. It gets cleaner as it gets older. That's amazing, isn't it? Right, next one. EVs shift emissions from roads to power stations. Now, we know that the grid is getting cleaner. That's sort of takes on from the last article, doesn't it? The last uh, headline. We know that we know that uh, the grid is getting cleaner. Now I did I did I did see somebody say something about 
Heat pumps. If you generated all the electricity for a heat pump from a gas uh, power supply from the grid, it'd still be cleaner than using gas to heat the same amount of thing. I can't quite word it right. <laughs> What's the right word? It'd still be cleaner than using a gas boiler to heat your house, even if the, the you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Let's go on to the next one. Uh, Hydrogen will displace EVs. Now, we know that that has been going on for years. People have been saying that. And there actually has been uh, hydrogen cars out, but not many people bought them. Even though they were on the road, not many people bought them. So, I don't know. And also, hydrogen uh, fueling stations, they've been shutting down left, right and centre. And they're expensive. It, it, it's much more expensive to put a hydrogen fueling station in than electric hub, I, I'd say, if you wanted to fuel loads of hydrogen cars I'm talking about. Uh, right, let's have a look at the next one. I'm trying to go through them quickly because I don't want this video to be too long. Uh, EVs cost more to maintain. Now, I watch uh, a video channel, James and Kate. You probably know what I'm talking about. If you're anti-EV, you haven't got a clue what I'm talking about. And... Uh, James works for Cleverly and they got a fleet of electric MG5s and when he took the wheels off to unlock the, t uh, the brakes and brake pads after 100,000 miles they were almost looking like new after 100,000 miles fantastic isn't that fantastic and he said they're holding up really well so there we go um, do they cost do they cost more to maintain no right EVs have short ranges. Now, if you go back to the first Nissan Leafs, yes, they did. Do modern EVs, they have longer ranges. They have adequate ranges. Now, somebody said to me, as well in the comment section today, that their wife has got a car and it does 380 miles, I think. It's, I th did he say 380 miles? And he'd want something that does 380 miles. Now, 380 miles is from South Wales to... Glasgow and that's about oh, I can't remember exactly five and a half six hours driving I, something like that it's a long way it's a long way to not take a break so I don't understand it I, I don't need I don't need a 380 mile range myself I there's never going to come a point where I'm going to drive from uh, John and Groats to Land's End that's just challenges that is nobody does it in real life um there aren't enough critical minerals in the world for EV batteries. Now, years ago, not years ago, but a while back when, when EVs first came out, um, there was less less lithium discovered. And by 2020-ish, by 20 I think it says by you, more lithium has been discovered. And more lithium will be discovered again. Is it enough stuff? Yeah, because... <laughs> when you look for it, you find it. EVs lose much more range than petrol and petrol cars in the winter. Now, petrol and diesel cars do lose range in the winter. But if you've got a diesel car that's got a big, massive, long range, then you're not going to miss a loss of range that much. So I'm going to say, uh, personally, that's not a myth, is it? Um, EVs can lose uh, a little bit of range, quite a bit of range actually, when it's really, really cold. Um, there is ways around it, like preheating your battery and stuff like that. Um, so all cars sort of lose efficiency in the winter. Are EVs, do EVs lose more range? Uh, I personally, I'd say they do. They do. Um, so I don't know if that myth is busted or not. I haven't read what they've said on there. I haven't read it. These are all my opinions. If I read it later on, they might say they might change my mind. But I think that um, all cars lose range. But if you've got a bigger range, you're not going to miss that range you lost. The mining of materials for EV batteries is very bad for the environment. I have to bring this closer to put it in context. So I have to read this bit because I have read this bit. It's quite good. It's interesting, this bit is. Um, and here it goes here, okay? 
the the global emissions of CO2 for, and other greenhouse gases from battery mining and the production of solar panels and wind turbines over the next 30 years will add up to uh, 15 to 35 gigatons of CO2 as altogether over 30 years. This should be compared to the 40 gigatons of CO2 from global fossil fuel energy extraction uh, that's emitted every single year. So every single year is more than over 30 years for all the other stuff. That sounds bonkers, doesn't it? That absolutely sounds bonkers. Uh, charging an EV from the UK grid with electricity is created by burning gas makes no sense. Uh, now we know that um, gas is a big part of uh, the grid but it's getting cleaner all the time and it does make sense because it is cleaner than using the gas to make petrol and diesel. Um, we know that petrol and diesel also needs electric. Who would have thought, eh? <laughs> Making gas and pet making gas, making diesel and petrol also needs loads of electric. Just bang electric, straight an electric car. Uh, taking away the right to drive a diesel is a loss of freedom. Now, nobody, and I'm going to say this, nobody is taking away your diesel car. Nobody has come up to you grabbed your keys off you and said right I'm having that diesel car nobody's taking it away and even in 2035 it's still not taken away will it become harder to drive and fix in the future yes it will but nobody is taking it away uh, EV batteries run out of power and break down now if we go back to the Nissan Leaf first Nissan Leafs again uh, I think it was 8% back in them days it was 8% of call outs from the AA were for uh, running out of battery power. And that has come right down to something like 2% and it's getting less and less. And, it, and the AA said it's gonna be comparative to uh, petrol and diesel. It's gonna be the same. It's gonna be the same amount of breakdowns of running out of fuel. That's because there's more chargers and range has got longer. So that's, that myth is busted. I haven't read what they said, that's just my opinion, right? I, I'm not saying what they're saying because you can go and read it yourself. The car in the Luton car park fire was an EV. We know that's a load of old ghoulies. We know it's a diesel. It doesn't matter how much you cry about it. It was a diesel. It wasn't an electric car. We know it's not an electric car. The the police are not covering up. The DVLA are not covering up. And the fire services are most certainly not covering up. If you still think it's a hybrid car, then you're a book. Uh, the choice of new EV models is very poor. That's, uh, we know that's not true. There's loads of models now, so let's just go on for that one. EV tyres cause high levels of partic particulate, <laughs> particulate pollution. Now, we know from studies now that tyres do, do create particulate pollution, but, 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 <laughs> There's a lot of heavy SUVs out there as well. So just blaming electric cars for tyre pollution is, in my opinion, daft, because there's some extremely heavy diesel and petrol cars out there as well. So if you're gonna blame EVs, blame them as well. Um, if, you think, if you think tyre pollution is a problem, buy an extremely light car. Um, but it is, it is a load of rubbish. And also I've said this in other channels, that um, I think EV tyres are more evenly distributed across the car per axle, whereas a big diesel and a gearbox engine and gearbox in the front will have more weight on the front axle. So you might get, you, you know what I mean. Anyway, next one. The electricity grid won't cope. Uh, I think somebody commented about that just, just not long ago as well either. Where's all electric going to come from? Now, the, the National Grid have said, don't worry, don't panic. It's going to be okay. And they said they're, they're going to bring in things like smart charging and also 
People are encouraged to charge at night when demand is low, because it's cheaper. So, and now people are going to say, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and what they're trying to say is that, what about the people who can't charge uh, if they haven't got a driveway? But that's only 40%. So, if you, you think it's not, that's less of a load, isn't it? Through the daytime, 40%. So, National Grid has thought about it. Don't worry, don't panic, don't panic. If you're Auntie Evie, everything's going to be okay. Just listen to Mike, right? Just listen to Mike. Yeah, I give my name away now. If you listen to Mike, right? <laughs> because everybody calls me Grouch. Um, if you listen to me, everything is going to be fine. Don't worry about electric cars. It's going to be fine, okay? Um, next one. What's the next one? Heavy EVs will collapse the multi-storey car parks and bridges. Um, now, that's the same as um, the tyre thing, isn't it? It's the same as the tyre thing. Uh, Range Rovers, they're heavy. Um, BMW X5s, very heavy. So there's loads of heavy cars. You can't just blame electric cars for being heavy when there's loads of big SUVs. Um, so that's, that's, that's daft as well. Um, old EV batteries will be an environmental hazard. Now we know, I think even the EU are putting in in place where the materials for batteries on EVs have got to be recycled one way or another. All them things are coming in and there's lots of places that are starting now to actually recycle EV batteries. So no, EV battery doesn't go in landfill. Even if, even if a car gets written off as a Cat N or a Cat S, um, people buy that car and pull that car back on the road. If it's a Cat B breaker, then that battery might be in a breaker's yard sold to somebody else. So it, it doesn't all go in landfill and they're going to be recycled. So anyway, um, what's the next one? We're coming to the end. It won't be long now. Uh, insurance for EVs is more expensive than combustion cars. Now, there's a lot of caveats with that because uh, I did a comparison a few months back and for me, it wasn't that much more expensive. Now, it might be for some people, it might not be for other people. So there are caveats. I think R. R. Simmons did, um, he did a, a comparison as well, when he found that, like, if you compare, like for instance, if you, you can't compare a Tesla Model 3 long range to uh, a Ford Fiesta one litre, because that's not a fair comparison, is it? So if you do something like that, then yes, it's going to be more expensive. Because uh, Teslas are quite fast cars. So when he was comparing them for like for like, the insurances were quite similar. Um, synthetic fuels make more sense than EVs. Now, all the things I've looked up on synthetic fuels say that it'll only be a niche market by the time 2035 comes around. They won't be making enough to serve the globe. It won't be a global amount of synthetic fuels by 2035. And also, it will be expensive. So, a niche market, I'd say, uh, synthetic fuels are. And obviously, by then, just think how good electric cars will be by 2035. Right. EV sales have slumped. Now, slump to me sounds like a word you'd use for um, they're going down. But they, 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 it's, it's, it's going up and it's come like a the slope has sort of evened off slightly. So global sales are still going up and even sales in the UK are still going up at the moment. Um, but they have sort of evened off, even off slightly. And I think that's going to change in the next few years with cheaper EVs coming in and all this new battery technology. Um, so that, that was, and it comes to the conclusion then. So I'll leave the link in the description if you haven't seen it. You've probably seen it already. Um, but there we go. And that is called, let me get back to the start again, because it's quite a long, it's called The Little Book of Eevee Myths, but it's quite a long read. Um, so that's the fair charge, The Little Book of Eevee Myths. <sighs> right, I can stop talking. <laughs> okay, right, so um, if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Ahoy!